Welcome to the one within all back to the universe. This is your host chance and today I've got sort of a bonus show for you. The deal is I have a tier on Patreon for people who support the podcast at $12 and up where if you join that tier, you get to hop into the group zoom call and record a live podcast. I mean, it's not broadcast live, but Anyway, you get to record a podcast with me and whoever else is in that tier. And it's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a few months now. But I'm actually about to be taking a bit of a vacation, just about a week off from the show. Haven't done that in a long time. And so while I'm gone, there obviously isn't going to be the same amount of new content going up. Maybe, maybe not any. And so I want to give you guys access to this multiverse chat, multiverse episode three, as it's called, because that way you have something to tide you over till I return with more new normal episodes. So you guys are about to hear something if you're in the free audience that normally you'd have to pay at least a regular plus subscription for. So to get into the conversation and actually join it, you need to be on the $12 tier, but To just hear these conversations every month, you get this bonus episode typically if you're a regular $5 a month plus subscriber. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about, Interverse Plus is $5 a month on Patreon and it gets you two hour episodes every week and all this other bonus stuff I've been explaining. So I'm going to be off on this vacation heading to Utah and Colorado exploring some nature. It's going to be a lot of fun and I am excited to come back and do a lot more interverse when I, as soon as I can, but hey, you guys have a great life out there (laughs) and enjoy this conversation. It's sort of like a bonus round with Corinne, who was our most recent regular episode guest. One of the things I do with the multiverse chats, and this might make it more appealing to sign up for it, is that I'll hit up a recent guest of the show and bring them on as a special guest to the multiverse conversation. And this time around, that's what we did with Corinne. And it ended up being just me and her talking because, unfortunately, we couldn't line up a good day for everybody in that tier to actually meet, it sounds like. And I think some people are in that tier just to support with $12 and they don't actually care to make a show, which is nice, too. It's just nice that there are individuals who want to support <laughs> what I'm doing. It's kind of cool because, you know, I could make more money making some like doing probably like game streaming or something i don't know there's a lot of more people doing that maybe it'd be harder but i'm really good at video games all right so i'm gonna hop us over to the actual conversation now but it's been fun talking with you in this pre-intro intro i don't know love you all have fun with this conversation with corinne i'm calling it saints and vampires <laughs> you'll see why all right, what's up, everybody? Multiverse episode three. Multiverse is the uh, special conversation we do once a month for people at the $12 and up support tier. But I publish it for all the patrons to hear because uh, these are conversations with our tribe. These are the people that we're friends with and connected with through the show that we are, I guess, all into. <laughs> and today I've got a special guest again. Say hello. Hello, I am the special guest. And who might you be? I am the occult priestess. (laughs) So we've got you back once again. We just had an episode with you. I've kind of like, this has sort of been my pattern the last three months of this is someone who was a really recent guest come in and be special guest on the multiverse chat because I don't know if I liked the show and I was going to be doing this kind of group conversation, I would be excited to get in there with a guest that was neato. So that's the hope, but it might just be you and me manning the ship tonight. It depends on who can show up and pop in, but there are quite a few candidates and hopefully we'll see some of our multiverse friends. And if not, you guys out there that are just regular old plus members, maybe think about bumping up to the $12 tier, maybe just a month. And then you can have a conversation like this with me and, uh, your topics will be on you, or if you don't have any, then I'll, I'm sure, blather on about something. But you never know who might be the special guest as well. And as you can see, it's not like we're crowded elbow to elbow in this uh, chat. There's enough room for me to just go on and on and on. So uh, come on, <laughs> jump on in. The water's fine. $12 isn't that much of an ask anyway, especially 
considering what you're already getting for the five. But hey, okay. So tell tell me about what you sent me earlier. Core. Uh, let's oh, talk sure. About that. Well, I think that's a great idea, though. I do want to give you credit, Chance, as Vietnam happens over my house, sorry, uh, that you're actually giving access to the speakers, authors, and teachers, because that is a big problem in this world, that people just don't have access to the right people. And thank you for uh, showing us the right people. So what I sent you today uh, was from my Twitter and you can find me on Twitter. Please follow uh, at Occult Priestess on Twitter. And I saw, I uh, looked at Freeman Fly's tweets from freemantv.com. And he tweeted out about the satanic temple was making the news today. And also I saw like little trending Satanism and the satanic temple also trending along with RBG, Ruth. Bader Ginsburg, because oh she's she's lying in repose that they used to do for like saints and stuff, <laughs> because they were. Uh, <laughs> I forget Not that to word. laugh at someone dying, but I mean, she was old, right? I, it's like funny though that you make this correlation to saints because that's what the state is, everybody. That's the religion of the masses. It's the opioid of the masses, the big bad belief system to rule them all, Sauron and everything. Yeah. She's like Evita, dude, lying in state. Now Evita was actually sainted, believe it or not. Saint Evita. I don't know who that is actually. Oh, um so there was films and movies made about this political slash actress Avida from Argentina, and it is a part of our, our history, our global history. And anyway, they sainted her. She was a actress. So basically, the rich people believed that she was a whore because she was an actress. So there was a huge class divide there. But then she married, I believe, a general and became someone of great worth, but not really of great worth, you understand. It was just that they falsely elevated her and gave her great worth, just like they do with the satanic bloodline families of politics. So there's a the thing. Why and Hollywood. Do they, yes, and Hollywood. It's all together. You know, if it's popular, it's probably Satan. <laughs> Sorry, I have to close that window. Um, you know, that actually connects to something I didn't say earlier. You talked about trying to be like able to connect teachers to the audience and that is important to me. And I think if uh, I was a different person, this show would probably have a lot larger audience by now because of the average ambitious podcast host goes Indeed. for the biggest, baddest guest they can get. And I, I'm not like against that on principle, but when you do grow really rapidly and also you're bringing on people that are already in high demand and super busy, there may be a lot of other candidates that are in less demand, but are perhaps equally interesting or wise or helpful and they are more available. And so I, I want to not say that I'll never have a big name on a show or something, but oh, it's sure. never been like the first thing I was going for to try to elevate the podcast reputation or whatever. And I think that is uh, also a safety net because the less absurdly popular someone is the uh, less likely that they've been falsely elevated through the networks of the cult, because that's actually for what sure. it means when stuff goes viral uh, for, sure. for, for the most part, especially now in the controlled internet, maybe not in the early wild west days of the internet, but stuff doesn't become mega popular any more randomly than the Backstreet Boys became mega popular. They had a huge distribution network to sell that image and the packaging was correct and people bought it. And that's, I mean, there's so much in what's the so-called counterculture that I've uncovered in the last couple of years. That's the same exact thing even. So they do it, at, it to different subgroups of humanity. They create, they literally have infiltrations everywhere, whether it's like the music festival scene, which is what I'm referring to that I started noticing it at. I've heard so many rumors like about that scene. Counter supposed to be counterculture as can be right. And <laughs> I mean, since the grateful dead and after it's never actually been, the real counterculture, although people that follow those type of musical movements and even some of the music itself can be good. And there's plenty of authentic artists in those worlds, but there are 
snakes in the grass, man. There's like actual Most infiltrators. of them are snakes in the grass or you don't get in the club. Speaking of clubs, I wanted to bring up that I basically was raised spiritually in a gothic club as a teenager. And as I grew up in my 20s, I was a psychic for my local dance club. And what we knew there, what we saw happen there was what we called the Kool-Aid kids come in and take over. We had something going there. There was no liquor license for like the first year. So it didn't attract a negative crowd, really. It was beautiful, fun, gothic dancing, like like disco, only with black clothing. And then uh, as the why years- people incarnate on Earth is for, for like times like that in their life. Oh, yes. Oh, sir. So much. But the thing was, is that we saw it being infiltrated. And then, I mean, one of the examples is the the vampire role playing kids came in and kind of took over for a little while. And the vibe, it just died. And then it went to the worst high school ever. Like it became Columbine. It totally this is why changed we can't the have vibe. Nice things. Indeed. And it's infiltration, just like you pointed out. And then also on the what you were talking about with, we don't have access to real teachers. I asked someone at a festival here in Los Angeles, Disclosure Fest, I asked this gentleman, I said, what's the difference between a guru and a mentor? Because he had a mentor, but he, his guru, he said, my guru is someone that I haven't even met. It's someone I watch on the internet. It's somebody whose teachings I understand. And I said, okay, great. What, what's a mentor? He said, well, that's, that's my actual guru, you know, like my business guy, the guy who teaches me how to get my name out there and get popular. And I was like, wow, okay, so you're saying that authentic teachers are untouchable because they have too many students. And so you go to a businessman instead. And I thought that was like very telling of Los Angeles in general. Uh, yeah, that's what the business is there is like image and the more you start to understand about what we're talking about with like things that are satanic, it's actually a lot simpler to call them artificial as a, as a sense, because you start to immediately divide the audience, if you will, when you call anything by any religious terminology, but satanic and the terminology we're referring to could be indicative of a whole number of cults and belief systems actually but it's just about whether or not the belief system and what it builds is some kind of artifice artificiality and antithetical to nature or something that is alchemically if you will in alignment with the the processes and patterns in nature and in that sense also you know following natural law We can say for muggles that darkness is a force. I mean, that's really the truth. Darkness is a force. It's not a form. It's not a person. It's not a name. It's not a group. It's not a label. It's it's not a form. And that's Buddhism 101. So we have to feel the vibes. And I will use Star Wars, you know, like Jedi's. They felt the vibe. And that's what we do. And so that takes you away from any kind of prejudice. And, you know, I see auras before I see skin color. So (laughs) there's this crazy thing I came across the other day that was a book. I'm going to have to look up the name of the book uh, and I will in a moment. And I'll after I tell you about it and you're responding, then I'll go pull it up. But I came across this book that was all about psychic vampires. And so this is like just to back up what you're saying, that the darkness is a force. I mean, it's it's true in one way that like God is everything and there's only one God or nature is everything. There's only one nature or there's only one reality. There's only one totality, but that totality contains all things also in like in balance in negation with their opposite. You could say this is something that Carl Jung explains in the seven sermons to the dead. He actually calls this a abraxas and that's the, and that's the effectiveness itself is the one thing that remains unopposed in the pleroma or the all because now we know where we got pleroma from was the Gnostic. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. So this is like a continuation of what we talked about last episode in some ways, but yeah. So everything is negated by its opposite whenever it's put into the totality of everything. And so nature's in balance, but effectiveness is opposite is ineffectiveness, which does not negate it because it's ineffective. <laughs> it's kind of like a joke. It's <laughs> or like a, antimatter. A, it really doesn't matter. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, I got that one from Rocky Horror Picture Show. I totally stole it. <laughs> okay. That's good though. But anyway, that basically means that like uh, nature respects a unity uh, in force, if you will, mind, body, spirit acting in unison. And that means like you can go Darth Vader or you can go Luke Skywalker, basically. Indeed. And nature respects either way. I mean, you're going to get returns for your investment that are reflective of what you put in. But if you feed off of the darkness, then that actually is like kind of that kind of works for you until at some point you disintegrate into a, a pile of ashes black goo, black goo. <laughs> like <laughs> where you get thrown off of a, a death star like <laughs> the emperor but anyway um that was like a big diversion from kind of more of what you're going to talk about with what was coming up in the news but i feel like the ideas are important to i don't think there. it's a diversion at all that was an extension of the truth dude the news is the facade and if i see satan all over the facade then i know what's behind it i mean you know it's a no-brainer what you yeah. described is what's behind it well so like what were some of the things that they the Satanists were in the news for like what's going on exactly. Okay. So, um, there is an article on Huffington post. Do you know the Huffington lady? Okay. <laughs> um, and the article says the death of justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg pushed this woman to join the satanic temple. And here's why. And she speaks, obviously she's quite the muggle She's an attorney, which means she's already been a Satanist. Thank you very much. Apologies to any attorneys out there. <laughs> I don't However, think they need this information. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's just a regular mom, so to speak, she says. And then she finds out that religion itself, so there's where her gun is pointed at religion, itself keeps us as women, again, another divisive topic, not being in charge of our own bodies. OK, so she joined the Satanic Temple so that she thought that she could be in charge of her own body over the New World Order. She believes Satan is going to protect her from this. So it's very twisted because they'll turn around and say, well, you have to get a vaccine. But of course, your body is your body. So this you see the narrative is already so twisted. It's going to get more and more and more dark. And I do suggest if people can handle it to watch the movie. It's just called Mother. That's, that's the name of it. That's the title of it. It's got Jennifer Lawrence. And the movie goes from an okay situation to total outright horrifying chaos, the worst you can imagine. And I would say that's Gnostic, darlings. And I would say that's what we're going about to get into as a planet, as a people. And we're going to be living out these myths for reals. It does seem that things that were seeded long ago are basically able to be pulled out of recent events and said, okay, here's the prophecy, here's the book of revelation. But revelation also means revelation. It means now you know something you didn't know and things can't And apocalypse is, is to reveal. And it's a beautiful word, apocalypse, if you look it up from the ancient Greek. <laughs> yeah, but once you know, you can't really unknow. It's, it's hard to but do But you that. know what? The more you know, the closer you are to God and your soul. And isn't that, I mean, really, isn't that the most important thing? Yeah. I mean, for anyone that has had enough experience in life of what it felt like to be on the yo-yo of getting closer and then further away, it seems like you want to just do what gets you closer. <laughs> yeah. And it hurts and it's painful, but it's better than being further away. And I ask people to please think of themselves, their soul as a flower. The flower only buds and lives in the light. Yeah, this is You've also You've got to reach toward the light, even if it's moonlight. You know, that's a whole other topic, but it's still light. Moonlight's a weird one, though. Have you heard about the people who've done experiments that demonstrate that things like, that moonlight is cold, basically, and that has a decaying effect? And if this oh, is that's alchemy. And that's how alchemy, like a chemist, would describe the moon. It's definitely not poetic or metaphysical. 
Yeah, but they seem to be able to record lower temperatures in moonlight than in the shade from the moonlight on like a full uh-huh. moon. And That's more physical, darling. It's just like interesting. Science. It's, oh, it's okay. interesting <laughs> because it flies in the face of what people that have like the mainstream uh, Star Wars sci-fi, what space is, <laughs> you know, type of view, worldview. It flies in the face of that because if it's just reflected sunlight, it should be the same temperature at least or maybe slightly warmer, but it wouldn't be shining coldness. And then native Well, I don't understand the Star Trek to- way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. But look who wrote it. And Star Trek was, or was it Star Trek or Star Wars? I'm sorry. Well, either one is probably, uh, you know, came from similar sources. Well, we understand it's Joseph Campbell's hero's journey right there. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's Wars. like signatures on Star Trek. I'm looking it up right now, but the, uh, oh, then I got to tell you the name of the book about psychic vampires. Mm-hmm. I've just yes. totally derailed myself from that conversation. You're totally awesome. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, so they actually have a 33 and a 911 on the USS Enterprise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the USS Enterprise NCC 1701. Oh, uh-huh, yes. If you do any slight playing with the numbers, like CC being the third letter twice, 33, or the uh, 11, the two ones being added to the seven to make a nine, and then there are already two ones, so it's an 11. It's just a slight, maybe a more of a stretch for the 911, but definitely not a stretch for the 33. Anyway, no, I totally get that. In the space force i have to which i call space farce actually (laughs) is using all the star trek iconography in their uniforms and and their symbols also star trek was written partially by a channeler that we know as bashar who is still channeling and and working with an alien supposedly from Sirius. And so we can see back back in the the day when they were doing Star Trek, they were already doing this narrative of, you know, space force. So it's been seeded. And there's so much more than that because it goes back so far. And, you know, this is just one small example in our pop culture of mass brainwashing. Oh, yeah. Let me just lay down a possibility for everyone of what has been happening and may be happening, which is the idea of, first of all, ley lines and like power nodes and crossings of energetic energetic patterns of the earth, just the way that we have meridian lines and chakras of our body. Yeah. Yeah. The earth has these things. And so long ago, the Vatican came came up and just... uh, rocked up to every one of these places and put basically put uh, chapels and big cathedrals and stuff on them and destroyed then, our statues, killed our people. Oh yeah. I mean, there's more to it than that. It was genocide up mm-hmm. to that point. I mean, to even know where those were, they had to, to know about them. They had to be taking that knowledge from someone else because the, the darkness isn't creative. It's just a scavenger. So that's Perfection. How. Darkness is not creative. If people could get that, they would understand so much of the storyline right now. It's literally, I mean, it seems so obvious too. It's creative or destructive, light or dark. <laughs> I mean, we all have darkness because we all have the capacity to destroy, but sometimes that's used wisely with proper the, judgment. The harm in us, the harm in us is power to arm, is what Kate Bush says, my favorite singer. So yeah, there's a reason why we are defensive (laughs) and can protect ourselves. And I think it's so important just that all people know, please stand up for yourself physically if you're being physically, you know, hurt. So please, there's, there's no problem in protecting yourself. Damn it. (laughs) Where was I? Cause I have like at least two places I need to go still. (laughs) So the title of the book. Okay. That's a good one. All right. So uh, I'm going to have to still look that up. (laughs) <laughs> what was okay, that? What that's else was cool. I on? Uh, we were talking about darkness, psychic vampirism, ley okay. lines. I've got it. Because you do understand France underneath Paris is all bunches of dead bodies. Okay, and it probably you. stretches all the way to Rome because they put, they went, even in England when they were building a bridge, they would kill someone and put them in the bridge as they were building it. I mean, these, these sacrifices everywhere. 
Right. It's, it's actually necromantic and they would sell like the fingernails of some priests and all that. And Jiminy Christmas. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's why they got the lady laying in, in state or whatever state, for multiple yes. days, because it's like, there's the, the empty vessel, the corpse. That's what it's a is, death cult. That's yes. what's worshiped. And then that's why they get uh, people through the legal system in the word magic to actually identify as something artificial and, and symbolically dead. And, they actually, they call the, the supreme masses. supreme corpse. <laughs> they call the masses the dead. I know, because they're projecting, because they <laughs> truly are the damned. And if we go to Bohemian Grove and we look at the cremation of care, they say we are the damned. They know it. And believe me, I've been in their heads. They really do hate, hate breathing. They hate breathing. <laughs> That's wild. But okay, so here's where we're at. We're talking about the cathedrals and things built on all these ley lines after the ancient peoples were wiped out. And yeah. they took symbols from the ancient peoples and repurposed them into Mithraism. And this was actually before it was even Christianity. They were already taking these ley lines out and setting up shop when it was like just the Roman Empire. Then it got too difficult for the Roman Empire to maintain their, their grip on everything through just military might. So they decided to go a different route, which was to let all the countries appear to be independent, but then control them through the papacy and have all the royalty actually answering to the Pope. So in this time, they switched from Mithraism See, wait, to Wait, wait, Christ- let's look at that. The royalty was yeah. answering to the Pope. That went on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The royalty all around the world listened to the Pope. So these guys have got access to all these countries to build the cathedrals and to spread the ideology. And what they're doing, in my opinion, this is the hypothetical here. I'm getting back to the hypothetical. Sorry, I've been kind of scattered tonight, but this is a big idea to unpack. They they seed the archetypes of these stories that were already resonant in the people's consciousness from their ancestry, but just repurposed into a new form called Christianity, which is Mithraism 2.0 which also goes back to Egypt and it's who knows how many point O's it is. But the point being that with the control of this ley line network and the implantation of these ideas and symbols and this crazy stained glass art and paintings and, and uh, the texts and everyone coming there for mass and all, the collective consciousness literally just gets like implanted and jazzed up with these ideas, these even all the way to the book of revelation ideas. And then, so is it any surprise later that the way that the collective dream reality manifests and unfolds is a direct parallel to the stuff going on in book of revelations. It's actually even more obvious that to me that that's what's happening because book of revelations is all symbolic of sky clock stuff anyway. So sky clock, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, it's just a better phrase for astrology, I guess, okay, or cool. astronomy. It's, there it's are astronomy. No better phrases. <laughs> I like sky clock because it's less divisive between people who want to say astronomy is the thing versus people who say astrology is the thing. Cause both of them got to agree. That's a feeling. That that's emotional the... placation to muggles. You know, astrology is a word. Let's you, you know, do your thing chance. Sure, but, I'm okay, just so a sky teacher. Clock, <laughs> sky clock also has the connotation of alchemy because it's like, this is the time to do this. Well, it also talks about Kronos, which is Saturn, which some people think is Satan. So, you know, it takes you down a dark path immediately because you're not using an original word. So, okay, let's fast forward to our time. They've seeded us with all these book of revelation ideas. It's time for the transition to the next thing because their storybook is running out of pages. (laughs) And and so at this time, instead of having just the ley lines on lock in Europe and then later in America for a while, they kind of have basically gone global and they have these big ass, phallic 5g like every g tower all kinds oh, of yeah. towers it started with radio actually they blank, started blanketing <clears throat> the whole planet with frequencies early on with telegraph wires and then it moved up in scale and it has been marching on and on so while they're implanting everyone now with different ideas different fantasies star wars and star trek realities and transhuman yep. <laughs> pipe dreams they're doing it at the with the while jacked in, if you will, to the human collective consciousness through all the technology that creates a new sphere of, of really strange, strange future potentials. And so I think we really have to start looking into ourselves as people who want to actually see a different reality manifest than the one that's being scripted. 
we're going to need to start like actually figuring out this geomancy thing and actually doing some things to make ripples uh, in the in the pond, if you will, and kind of like I don't know. We need to get some some we need to get something in the gears here to gum them up, slow down this transition into pure artificial virtual reality because. I've had enough, I've lived enough on computers. Like I intend to have to work on computers a little bit for like maybe forever, but I I have way too much of that kind of stuff in my life right now. Way too much screen time. I just want to like go outside anyway. So that was the big unpacking of the theory, but I think there's really something to it. I think that's how the future is controlled is through these grid lines. And now it's like a way more, it's a net more than a grid now. Okay, so <clears throat> the Earth is alive. We agree. Yeah, it's a consciousness. Yeah, it's a living giant thing. Okay, well, consciousness. It it has a mind, if we will, a mind of Earth, and Earth is a planet. It's let's call her she, just for my taste. Um, Mother Earth. She's a consciousness, just like Mother Venus or or Father Jupiter, Zeus. These are consciousnesses. We are living in a consciousness that we call Mother Earth physically. I and some other people live on other dimensions as well. We exist and we know our existence above ourselves in many layers of different higher vibrations. You know, that's how that works. It's layers. But here on 3D dimensional Earth, the Mother's ley lines her crystals, her oil, her, her grids, basically. These, this is her body. This is her blood. This is her chakra system. And yeah, sure, it's been hijacked. Is it up to humans to unhijack it? Because humans didn't necessarily hijack it in the first place. The force of evil did. The force of evil used voluntary humans who were in league with the evil to do these things to the earth. So don't you also believe, based on that, that God will assist earth and us with our internal meridians and ley lines, chakras, as well as earth mother with hers. See, I do believe that many people are like, hey, we got to do something right now. And they think that they're going to become this metaphysical, amazing person that can wave a wand and change things. But that's not how it works because we work in co-creation with God. So therefore, all of this is a natural thing. If people could understand a little bit that they're kind of tripping right now, their third eye is more open. It's kind of like they're on ayahuasca. They're, they've got more light in their pineal gland. And that is going to bring more things to their attention. These things have always been here, but it's coming more to the attention of, of the collective all at once. And I see that as God's story, God's plan. That's the best answer I could have expected, or I don't know, you really did disarm the entire premise, which is what I was hoping for because I oh, thought, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Because <laughs> I thought that uh, maybe I could take some listeners on that journey, if you will, and be like, okay, we got to do something and then realize, oh, wait, we have to just do what's best for ourselves and our physical health. And that internal terrain is the fractal yes. connected to the mother terrain. Yes. And that's actually all that must be done. And the more, yes. <laughs> that's it. It's like that easy. And uh, that is throwing the, that is messing up the plan. That's the and plan. then you it's will about, get in the heart and the mind of your actual physical earth mother, you see, and then magic starts happening. And then you get to really know what's going on because you're in that good grace. You're not the in idea the of like brain. getting in there and actually making something happen and change something in a big way. You can way. make packs with the goddess. I've made several packs well, I mean, with the like, goddess. The idea <laughs> that like we need to unhijack it by hijacking it back or whatever, like with the ley lines and like with ritual and all that. I think that entire avenue. Yeah, no, of, that's of just magic, ma black magic with black magic. Yeah. Exactly. I think that whole avenue of like uh reality isn't good enough for me. I need to do something that's mm -hmm. like a cheat code to hack mm -hmm. it. That mm -hmm. entire Thank idea you. Is that's like, chaos magic. <laughs> completely. You just said it. You could just be like, this is what I really hope happens. I'm sending this message deep into myself and without myself. 
for any beings that may assist, but this is what I, I would like to happen, but I accept reality for what it is. Like, you but why do don't you day. also say, you know, yeah, I'd like this to happen. So why isn't it happening? God, spirit guides, anybody up there, <laughs> you know, please, could you give me an answer? That's the thing. We the, the conversation between you and we'll call it the universe, you know, that's the magic. That's where you get the love from. And that's the how you, you learn. Yeah, you, you create your own light within you. You become Universe. phosphorus. Thank you. you That's yeah. also the right answer. Man, you're like 100% on this today. Am That's I actually- being graded on this? <laughs> No. Am I chance? <laughs> you, in, you never know. <laughs> if, you know, you're just impressive that you've, you've got all this straight because it's a, a very confusing time right now about what is and isn't aligned with our true nature, which is source, which is God, which is reality itself. And the real thing about sovereignty, like you just pointed out, sovereignty. is you ask, you ask questions, ask King, asking. Yes. That's the, the trick. Like the, it is. the religious priest or whatever, whenever they want you to think that prayer is a one way request form that you fill <laughs> out verbally and send to God for whatever it is that you need or want to happen, even if it's not for other people and nice, but I'm sure. And let's not forget they tithe to the church. So they'd say, Oh, I need a a Maserati. So here's a, here's a hundred thousand dollars church. And then I'll get my Maserati. (laughs) (laughs) But okay. So I'm sure there's Christians out there that do like ask things of God. So I'm not saying that's no Christians, but it's not generally like I wasn't. Oh man, the Hindus, the Hindus are really bad at at that. You know, they're always going to their altar every day asking for what they want, not for what God wants. Instead of asking questions of how, how, yeah. Asking how is a way better question than asking for, because Mm -hmm. it's got to come through you. It's your life. Yes, sir. And that's a whole self-respect issue, right? Yeah. I mean, Do you I'll, respect yourself enough to know that you can talk to God and God can talk back to you because we're just children. Darn it. <laughs> right. And you can, if you don't want to even call it God and like think that it weirds you out to think you're talking to God, then say higher self, whatever. You don't even have to sure. label it. It's an, yeah. an ambiguous voice within you because that's actually what nature is, is pure ambiguity. <laughs> Except for mother ayahuasca, you know, she shows up to everybody basically the same way. So it is, like I said, you, people are starting to have little tiny sitar eyes. Sitar eyes from the Hindu, but I can say a little LSD experiences for the Westerners. <laughs> yeah, I felt myself start like tripping heavier uh, midway through this conversation. <laughs> That's the Shakti power, darling. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Wow. Yeah, this is a fun surprise. I <laughs> meant to ask you about it earlier and... Yeah, we did have some people say they confirmed that they could come to do this group chat, but then uh, one, at least one unconfirmed at the last minute. And yeah, it's all good. I figure even if uh, sometime it's just me up here, I'm sure I could talk for an hour or 45 minutes or something, but it's more fun with a friend. And this conversation has been magical. I feel like it's like the missing piece of last week's episode. (laughs) Ta-da! You know, I get so nervous. I was really weird on camera. So give me a break. I'm going to try to get used to it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I wonder if video is even the way for me to go, but I've come up with a, I've come up with a way that it's really easy for me to also do the video. So I'm going for it. I have been wondering about that. Wonder woman. I wonder, and I've been asking God, you know, Hey man, do I really need to do video? Is that a psychic vampire thing? Like, will it make it worse? (laughs) Because sometimes like, especially like with a new client, I get all their, their spookies or whatever they might have hanging around them. And then I got to deal with that, like for real. And so I'm wondering, will being on the internet so much also translate to the psychic vampirism. Well, you know, maybe you need to read this book that I'm finally going to reveal. All right. <laughs> I'm wanting to read it. I'm planning, maybe I'm just probably going to order it while we're talking just to make it a legit thing. But it's yeah, called Psychic vibes. Vampires by Joe H. Slate. Psychic Vampires, Protection from Energy Predators and Parasites. From what I understand, this guy was like in the 80s, hired by the military of all things. All right, that's one red flag. (laughs) But to study psychic vampirism, and yes, that's a red flag, but 
the thing about military research is it's not necessarily all incorrect or untrue. Well, we can see that Rick Strassman, who did DMT, the spirit molecule, (laughs) was hired by the government to do it. Yeah, well. So who controls the narrative? The government. That's very true. But I find that there are some interesting points in here. What do you think of Curly and photography? Maybe this book is totally off base, but it seems like. Well, I'm not saying that, but yeah, Curly and photography is great. It's called Aura Photos. And I've actually had one almost every year of my life. So that's something I really dig. Okay. So this researcher was using techniques like that to try to measure the aura. And he would do it before and after interactions with people who were psychologically evaluated to have traits of what they consider to be energy vampires. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to show that the vampire had a very constrictive aura with a lot of black in the middle. And then there was also vampires and I have photos of this from the book, but uh, there's also some of vampires were actually aware of what they're doing. The average ones were just doing it unconsciously out of like a survival mechanism because they were so low vibing and ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we all, I think, realize the point where like, oh, shit, I'm vamping off this person. Like, I remember when it finally sure. occurred to me that I was kind of vampy. And then at that point, different needy. versions. Needy. <laughs> needy. Needy is the word. Yeah. I wasn't yes. like vampy is a totally different thing. It's because like, that means purpose. evil intent. Like you want to hurt that person. The other thing is like, true. oh, poor me. Sorry, me. I'm codependent. Please yeah, help true. me. You know, as soon as I okay. realized, though, that I was like going to people and needing something from them and... <laughs> thinking like they were higher and I was lowered. So I was going to them for, for this and it was going to be like a boost for me, man, my life changed. But the funny thing is that after that happened, I started meeting people that were young, like a bit younger than me that like at that age, when I was that age, they started acting to me exactly the way that I was acting to other people that I yeah. like, I looked up to. And I was like, this is such a trip, man. I'm literally it's, repeating yeah. all these same scenarios, but from the other side now. Yeah, Yeah, that's immaturity, sweetheart. We all go through that. (laughs) It's just cool. I'm 31, so I'm always so mature. (laughs) It's awesome. Yeah, it's in again in BDSM. First, you're a bottom, and then you get trained, and you become a top. So (laughs) there you go. Oh, so many ways that it reflects life, BDSM. But okay. Also, I'd like to say that I knew a vampire man when I worked at the nightclub, the warehouse, uh, as a psychic, I have a picture of him. He has a very big orb on his tummy. And then he has a a big aura around his body in the picture. And I knew like this man, it's like, why is he slumming? Like, he's not from here. He's got money. He's like a successful person. But when we called him Archangel Michael, just for a joke, because he was so intimidating. (laughs) But when I got the picture back, I was like, oh my God, he really is like one of those vampire dudes. And so the thing is, is that they can come off as an angel of light, my dear. They really can. So you got to listen and feel and not be glamorized by the form. That's what the whole artificiality thing is about. It's the false light. That's Luciferian light, basically. Yeah, but to that's be a false a, light is... And that's not even a great word because Venus is the original Lucifer. And there's nothing wrong about Venus I can all. explain this. I can explain this. So Venus is Roman. So who cares about that? Aphrodite, would we call the planet Aphrodite? Wouldn't that be nice? Aphrodite is, yeah, one part of of Hermes. Hermes, Aphrodite make hermaphrodite, which makes all of alchemy. But to go to the phosphorus, which has been making the news lately, actually, in science, uh, phosphorus, I recently learned, means to create one's own light or to grow one's own light through you know, proper relationship with the universe. But it is to be born with the light already within, which means you probably come from, your soul probably comes from another planet, as we talked about in the second hour on the show last time, and my soul came through Sirius B. But that's why I was born with the light, the phosphorus. But also Persephone's story. Persephone is a goddess of Mother Nature's daughter, okay? Okay. So she's a goddess and she was stolen from the nature garden of heaven by Hades, the Lord of the dead or the Lord of the underworld. And so he took this beautiful, bright phosphorus flower from above and and drug her below into the darkness with him. And he was asked, why did you steal Persephone? And he said, quote, 
because she is phosphorus and full of light. This is the thing that the dark ones are after. They want to snuff out the light. And we are light bearers back from Greece and, and ancient times. And that light is within our souls. And so they literally cannot destroy our souls because we are bigger than them. Always have been, always will be. Evil is a fiction of this world that was created to teach lessons only to grow the soul from lead to gold. Yeah, it's artificiality again. <laughs> and think about movies. What are movies but a false light projection? And what is the ego but a false light projection? But give, the ego needs to grow. Like you said, you're a young man. You should still have parts of your ego completely intact because they are defenses to get through this world. But as we mature and get closer to the light, our heart softens and we are converted into a whole different beautiful creature that knows it's a child of God and is immortal. I love everything you just said, but uh, I was thinking and trying to hold on to this thought about Venus again because those silly Romans. <laughs> According to Catholicism, a venial sin is a lesser sin that does not result in complete separation from God and eternal damnation as a mortal sin would. So you can go unconfessed on your venial sins and who knows how they're defining those, but also just the word venal, like V-E-N-A-L, means that someone who is open to bribery or a mercenary characterized by corrupt dealings. And huh. that's just a couple of words. I mean, venison, you know that they vision, called... a deer. I'm, I'm sorry. Venison is another one that starts with oh, a deer and venereal. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. In Bram Stoker's Dracula, the film, uh, they call the diseases of Venus, venereal diseases, the diseases of Venus. And that, again, is just taking the feminine and bashing her head against the wall, as they usually do. And that's Abrahamic religion. Whatever happened to Mary? <laughs> That's okay, a song. So, <laughs> uh, In the movie about a saint. He's lost at sea. <laughs> um, the, the, gosh, there was a movie with Rosanna Arquette where she becomes possessed with the ghost of an old priest. And she goes through a, a internal chains where she becomes a peacenik, if you will. She becomes a child of God. Stigmata. The name of the movie is Stigmata. <laughs> Okay, so let's go Talking to... Talking about saints again. <laughs> saints and vampires. That's, that's right. That's the name of this conversation. That's okay. great. So the, uh, back to the vampires, this dude was doing the curly in photography. He had all this like well-funded research. The vampires that were doing it on purpose, they were like visualizing the energy transfer and they had practiced mm -hmm. a lot so that they would yes. know how to take just enough but not actually leave the person feeling too weakened by the interaction where they, they would like lay, lay praise and compliments on them up first, like butter them up and then drain them. So like intellectually, the person walks away from the conversation thinking, well, there's no reason why I should feel bad about that, but I feel a little icky, but I'll just trust my mind over my gut and they're okay. And then at that point, the vampire is able to get the hooks in and start manipulating the person to be near them more often. And that's yeah. all about that. They have this physical proximity thing, but in the Kirlian photography, people who had been d badly, uh, I guess, vamped, they would have black spots in their aura that were like little parasitic things that were just keeping the energy drain going. And to me, that's representative of the person like thinking about the vampire and like how, well, in this argument, maybe I would have said this and they would say that. The and psychic played. link, the conversation that continues after you're no exactly. longer in the vampire's and you're, presence. You're literally completely. sending them energy and that's a real thing. And, and the opposite realize, of that is when you have a guru, a real one, and you think of them and they come and say hello, like they're like in your head a lot. You know, it's just oh, amazing. Yeah. So there's I talk opposites. To people like, I talk to Terrence McKenna sometimes every time I do mushrooms, really. There you go. Exactly. And it's really him. <laughs> I know. I know. He loves talking. <laughs> I know. It's easy. He calls me up. We can do a whole show with him, dude. You and me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but okay. So I want to talk about how to break the chain of the vampire. There's multiple techniques, but first. You've got to understand that vampirism is codependence in nature. So it's codependency. Yeah. If you master heal. master-slave relationship. One doesn't exist without the other. If you heal your codependency, the vampire will no longer have any power over you. I promise. 
Right. So what, if you find yourself, because there's also vampires that aren't doing it to you on purpose, but you're still having this mental argument with them and sending energy towards the disagreement, if you will. Well, I want to tell you, those conversations are very, very real. Yes, exactly. They are real. It's happening in the psychic plane, but that makes it, it no is. less real. You're experiencing it. And what it sounds like what they would say, it might as well be to you. So there's no real reason to need to like try to put the reality label on it or off it. Just know that your mental energy is going towards that mental conversation that you're having. And that is literally a leak that represents a leak. So all you got to do to patch the leak is just if you're in the middle of the conversation in your head, just be like, I love you to that being. And then in the conversation, and it's over and you just can keep doing that. Yeah. And they People don't want- get guilt feelings um, because they were, they had a bad childhood or they weren't raised right or whatever, but they feel guilty. And then they start placating to the vampire. Like, well, how can I be nicer? Because honestly, I, I hate this person, but I have to be a nice person. So they talk themselves into the vampire's lair. Yeah, all those old stories are like talking about something that's an energetic thing. Okay, so one last thing about the vampires, although this may <laughs> turn into a lot more. Oh boy, uh, the order of the vampire. Someone sent me this and it claims to be a document from one of the orders of the Temple of Set. Okay. By, and it's written supposedly by Lady Lilith Aquino, fifth degree. So that's Michael Aquino's lady and Michael Aquino, the church of set, whatever they call it. Yeah, this is the Aquino people. You got it. So let me read a little bit from the beginning of this document. The order of the vampire is an order which embraces the concept of vampiric presence as a means to personal power and potential immortality. Vampirism is unique black magic, a unique black magical condition that in and of its very nature requires a posture which enables a natural and effortless exchange of power from the lesser to the greater. Ooh, there you go. BDSM. You see like what things are capitalized and uncapitalized too. And you'll see like, man, this, this is really a trip. If someone just made this as a goof, then they did a, they knew a lot, but I feel like this could be a real thing. Michael Aquino is into some real stuff, dude. I know. He's literally started the Temple of Set. So, I mean, it seems very plausible this is real. Okay, so in normal communication, this power is evidenced by the psychological control exerted over others. Through our black magic, this power is evidenced by accessing what is known as lucid dreaming and increasingly gaining mastery over that state of becoming, which is desirable in its own right. Vampirism goes back to time immemorial and true vampirism can be traced back in many cultures around the world and is therefore known by many different names. A true vampire knows that he does not achieve the posture of effortless power through the mundane act of physical blood drinking. In fact, to pursue such acts would mean that he did not understand his own condition, let alone vampiric black magic. I can't believe they're calling it a condition, like it's a, a health problem. <laughs> okay, so let me... To one last sentence here. Through Zeper, the word of the Aeon of Set, members of this order will strive to bring to life those qualities and aspects of our potential which have long been considered to be dead or latent. So there's a lot more about Children of the Night in that. And uh, there's, it's very, very interesting, not too long of a read. But I think it just, I want to point out that the posture of effortless power that they put in capital leading letters i think this is going back to that gnostic idea that the one truth of the universe is power itself effectiveness itself and that everything else including good and evil just is negated and so it's just about power well that's obviously twisted well that's i know i don't i don't believe that but this is like their thing this is like their religion Oh, I agree. And it's, it's the religion of darkness. They're worshiping death. There's not, they're not even worshiping Satan, Lucifer, all that stuff is made up. They literally are worshiping the God of death. Annihilation. Like, mm -hmm. Satan is the one that's artificial ex nihilo out of nothing, nothingness, which is not real. There can't be nothing that's, that's impossible because obviously right. there's something. They're always pushing the void, the void, the void. And it's ridiculous because the void is like the, that's the womb that's getting through birth canals. It's okay. We all do it. <laughs> yeah, but they're so traumatized. They want to go back to the one safest place possible, I guess, which is the 
the womb or the void. Yeah, but ironically, they actually don't they want to also exist. want to make other people's time in the womb literally no longer safe. And yes. like, hopefully this can be, I mean, I, I don't really care if this would offend someone because they would have a lot to check about themselves if this offended them. But like, to just get real for a second, I believe there's 40 million aborted babies to America's name since it was made legal. I recently heard that. Yeah, so, I mean... There's the evidence of the cult in action, if you ask me. Well, that goes back to the Bill Gates family and the eugenicists and the New World Order, which is what? A form of evil. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a, what a fun, dark conversation this has been. <laughs> hey, I'm gothic for a reason. I, you know, at 14, I started wearing black because I knew I was in a funeral for mankind. Okay, you're a pretty, pretty dang experienced psychic. And so I do want to ask one question. They talk about in well you know what do you have a minute maybe i'll read a little bit more after this i do i do okay the order's founders undertook research that brought them into a dialogue with and the acquaintance of existing vampiric characteristics and archetypal forces they were examining testing and proving to themselves through direct experience how many of the alleged vampiric powers such as invisibility manipulation the power of sound and breath etc were real and were usable Many of these same powers of, are, of course, harnessed by non, oh, I guess, five degree setians is what that's supposed to be, fifth degree setians. Through the black, the great black magic. Um, hold on. Basically, though, what I wanted to ask you about was I mean, that was an interesting sentence, and that was important because the getting acquainted with vampiric archetypes and these like, um, sort of simulated cities, if you will, <laughs> through, mm -hmm. through entities that are basically enslaving them to give them this ability, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, the question is like, why it relates to you as a psychic is what do you think about what they're talking about, the accessing the power and mastery over the state of becoming through lucid dreaming? Do you think they're like trying to power up their energy field and their aura so that when they enter the dream realm, they have a high amount of consciousness and they can like really work there and uh, even attack people from there? Oh, most definitely psychic attacks from the astral realm. But you've got to also understand they're trying to, in a negative, dark way, they're trying to bring dream to reality. Dream is coming to reality anyway. The fourth dimension, where we're basically at the ass of the fourth dimension now, we're entering it. We have 2020 has been entering the fourth dimension, which is the hell realm that the Buddhists call the bardo. And so, as you can see, that's why I brought up all the Bring Satanism. On the agenda 2021. I mean, yeah, 21. <laughs> that's right. Black so, Jack. Exactly. But all the Satanism that was on Twitter today, I was like, they're, they're getting proud again. They're, they're telling us they're Satanists again, which they, they have been doing during 2020. And many Satanists have been coming out of the closets and being proud of themselves. But we can see that, again, like I said, we're going to live those archetypes. We're yeah, going to live the hero's you're journey. You're probably seeing it in real time. So like where I'm at, you don't still really... People will definitely look at you funny if you said you were a Satanist where I'm at. <laughs> I hope so. I hope that we do get the clue that we're fighting evil in mass as a collective and we will fight it in any form it comes in. And that's the thing. That's why we must become the Jedi so that we can feel our way into the future. Man, they did, they did pretty good PR too with LeVay, LeVay and Satanism. They're like, what you'll go find is like their tenants and whatever. Man, someone could definitely read that and be like, this is cool. I guess I'm a Satanist. Especially 16-year-old, 16-year-old boys. That's their target market. And I've heard so many stories from real people uh, of being 16 and cutting themselves and just, you know, giving themselves to Satan. But, you know, they do much worse. And then there's MK Ultra. There's all these other forms and labels of evil. But if people would just get simple, simple and think, you know, there's the darkness and there's the light, which one do I choose? And which one do I choose every day, every hour? And then your heart eventually will move over to the light and it will never go back to the dark. But you know, I really feel like those choices have been made and everybody's stuck with who they are now. And that's why I say, don't reach out too hard to help others at this point. If they're beyond help, you've got to help yourself. Like we said earlier. Yeah. And then 
at that point, it actually will attract people to you that are ready to take the steps that you're taking. And it'll be easy to help them because it'll just be like, oh, I, I just did this. Do you want to help? Uh, help me with what I'm doing here. And then we can both be doing it. And it'll, yeah. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> and there's a book by Eve Lorgan, L-O-R-G-E-N, called The Alien Love Bite. And she has a, several other books about psychic vampires and about how the astral plane works on the physical plane, how people are corrupted and taken over by darkness. But I'll tell you, it's a simple choice in your heart of hearts. You either believe that the darkness is good or that good is good. And that's your soul. That's who you are. And it's not going to change, I believe, anymore. I'm sorry to say you're stuck where you are and hopefully you're stuck in the light. That's kind of interesting. Um, I guess I don't know that I can say I know that for certain that people that are in the dark now are stuck in the dark totally. But I do think that people that wake up to higher truths don't really go back into the matrix of whatever that re illusion was that they shattered. The thing yeah. is, it's easy to plateau and be like, oh, I, I'm out of the matrix. I, I found out about X or Y. <laughs> but what I think the real... I, well, kind of also related to the direction of like, what do we do? <laughs> Obviously, we know what to do is work on ourselves. But the idea that even engaging in these type of conversations or trying to spread this kind of information uh, for a lot of people that do it can end up just being like throwing gas on the, the spectacle fire, if you will. Because I think a lot of people in... I mean, the v level of violence that people have been desensitized to, myself included, I mean, being raised on video games, it's absurd. And so the fact that the, I, like, I know that I'm damaged just by the idea that I can talk about something like ritual sacrifice or uh, even abortion uh, and 40 million babies without immediately having a bit of an emotional wave hit me. I mean, I wouldn't think that I would as an enlightened being be completely at the whim of those emotions, but a open hearted person would be like, yeah, that like, are you actually feeling that? Like what that actually means to the mother herself? Yeah. Like, like That's it's, also kind of a psyop yeah. though. It's not like they took all these pregnant women in a room one day and yeah. killed all the babies at once, which is what the human mind, the logical mind puts that's how it frames it. Sure. But I, and you know, that's just one example, not to beat a dead Baby, I mean horse. Oh my god, <laughs> that was bad. Because the film that I brought up, Mother, the film I'm warning everybody to watch, there is a sacrifice in it like that. So it's fairly terrible. But at the end of the day, it comes down to being able to reclaim our sensitivity because what we can feel is what we can be aware of, and to like to experience sensual reality without the feeling of what you're sensing is hollow and empty and basically a simulation and artificial and even psychic abilities are a matter of just increasing what you're paying attention to and, and like noticing more. And then that informs your intuition and gives you like a, a formed idea or a flash of insight or what have you. Yeah. It's the trauma that we go through, even just watching TV. It's the trauma that causes us to shut down and become desensitized. And so therefore, most people don't want to even enter their subconscious, which is where we go when we meditate. We go beyond the subconscious, but beginners go into their subconscious. And that's where their abusive family is or their horrible pop culture is or, you know, the, the terrible things that happen to them are right there in their subconscious waiting to be discovered again. And unless you can get through those demons, you're never going to make it to heaven. So you, the heaven is within, but you have to slay all those dragons to be able to get there. You have to be a hero. There it is. <laughs> Boom. And it's eight o'clock or for you, I guess, seven or Mic six o'clock. <laughs> I think yes, we can. It's the power of Venus. <laughs> I think we can drop it here. I think this was great. Yeah, that was really a ride, Chance. It was like a roller coaster. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's not even too bad. Nobody, there was an actual paying subscriber made it. Not that you don't support me. Actually, you've been very supportive of me. And since it's just me and you after this call, if you want, I might even be able to help you with that tech problem real quick. Woo! <laughs> but I do want to thank you for this uh, spontaneous extra time here. And Enjoyed I it. think this conversation was powerful. And I also think because 
you, we, it was just me and you, and I would like to probably just put it out to everybody and not just the plus Yay! crowd. So this oh, is going to go <laughs> out to the world as a extra bonus round with core. And the reason for that is because I want you guys that are hearing this now that are part of the free listeners. I love you. I would like your support. And if you want to hear conversations like this with the Interverse tribe, it's only $5 a month and you get the extra second hour of every show. It's a normal show, but only $12 to hop in the mix with the uh, multiverse conversations. And you can do it just for one month if you don't want to stay on $12, if that's really breaking the bank too bad. But any, I'd love your support. I've been getting more and more support from you people that are the free listeners who've become paying supporters. And I appreciate it greatly. Not that that's why I'm doing this. Trust me, I could definitely do more profitable things. I have the skills, but I love this. This is actually, I want to do this for you guys, but I have to have some way that it's reciprocated so I can do it to the level and quality that I would want it to be if I was you. And I believe in chance guys. So let's give chance a chance. (laughs) I don't oh, believe wow. in many people. I'll tell you. I hope you, you've noticed. But I yeah. believe in chance. So, yay. <laughs> cool. Well, I appreciate that. I believe in you as well. And I consider belief to be basically mean love because yeah. otherwise you wouldn't believe in it. <laughs> That's right. So you're wonderful. And this was really fun. And we'll do more things. And if you're ever making content and you need my voice on that scene or even videos of me saying things, I'd be happy to. I know some things enough to be dangerous. And that's right. uh, You do. Curious (laughs) curious about things that you know. So I'm sure it would be fun. Thank you, the audience. Thank you for listening. I'm so glad I have some kind of an outlet because you know, I go crazy at home alone, knowing all these things and not be able to tell anybody. Ah. (laughs) Yeah, that's the trivia. We got to have input processing output. (laughs) But yeah, tell them while we're here, tell them where they can find you because more interverse people are contacting you from our last conversation. Yeah. Might as well. If you were on the fence after last time and you just heard this part, even if you didn't hear the second hour of of the uh, most recent episode with Core, you just heard this hour, you got to know that this lady could be a helpful person to coach you through whatever the thing is that you want to talk about because she's just going to hold up a mirror and show you the truth of who you are. And then boom. It's up to you. You can choose or not. And it's like, it's kind of a, a kind of a foolproof method. <laughs> oh, I love that chance. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm a cult priestess.com and please follow me on Twitter. I have some haters and not a lot of lovers. So at a cult priestess on Twitter. And of course my blog is WordPress slash a cult priestess and my YouTube is a cult priestess. So just Google me people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Link in the show notes too. And I apologize, Cor. I'm just not a Twitter guy. I hate it. <laughs> oh, well, I don't blame Instagram you. Guy. It's the darkest place in the universe, Twitter. But I'm there because, <laughs> you know, I think I got permission from Donald Trump to go ahead and say whatever the hell I want. So that's where I do my fighting is on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the I think Reddit's the real armpit of the the side. I reverse. think you're right. I can't even go there. So you're probably right. <laughs> so, sorry, Reddit fans. Maybe there's some cool spots on there, but not. It's not just for so me. infiltrated, you know, but so is it's all a cult, a oh, cult. It it's all yeah. Facebook, all of it. It's, but thank goodness for Facebook, or I don't think I would have eaten sometimes, you know, so I do have a little bit of brand loyalty in that sense. Like my people <laughs> are there. <laughs> yeah. We've connected to some good people through Facebook. All of us have, but uh, yeah. Um, real life though. We got to get back to that place. All right. I'm going guys. to bit shoot you guys. So come on over to bit shoot too. Yeah. I love bit shoot, but it occurred to me that it looks like bitch Ute. I know it's nothing's good yet. Not even brand <laughs> new YouTube or whatever the hell that is. I mean, there's no, nothing shining and sparkling, but I'm looking at the last American vagabond and he may be starting a network soon. Jason Burmis is on Rockfin, So there are different networks that the bigger guys that I enjoy very much are going on to. So I'm probably going to follow them. Hey, I, you know, I probably haven't said this many times on the show, but since we're still here, I'm on the fringe.fm now. Oh, right. You are. Oh, my gosh. Hi to Joe Roop. 
Yeah. That's that was, my little people over there, like my little clan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of mutual acquaintances and I was just like, can I get on here? And he was really busy changing up his website, but then later he got back to me and put me on. So I think I need to actually still send him your episode and oh, hopefully yeah. I'm doing a good enough job getting him something every week. But <laughs> it's funny, you go to uh, a call priestess's YouTube right now and you'll see me. The, the last upload I did was Lighting the Void, Joe Roop's show. So that's amazing because I've been on uh, the Fringe Network more than any other network. That's funny. Like definitely vibe with the ones I know over there and I expect more I would too, but. And I want to get more into Ryan Gable because I haven't really heard much of him. He sounds interesting. Yeah. uh, At some point I'm going to get my shit together and schedule a lot of really good interviews. I believe that. In fact, I kind of know that you're going to be giving Greg Carlwood a run for his money. THC. Woo. I love Greg. We I know almost, you do, but you can do better. We almost share a birthday. We're both from Missouri. See, it's, it's like so similar. It's so weird, but it could be that you're the good nemesis that comes up and takes over, but that's just my imagination. Oh, I don't need that. I don't need to compete with the Carlwood. No, you don't. I mean, he does a good job, but I, I really believe in you. Like there's more here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. That's nice. I guess we'll wrap it up. 808 PM. I got to go get something to eat and Excellent. Uh, Thank you. move on with my life. But this has been fun and so much fun that it was hard to stop. I that's hope right. that you guys all enjoyed it and I'll catch you all on the flip. See you later, Corey. Thanks a lot. Peace.